Till now we have discussed how to calculate the compound interest and the total amount when the interest rate is compounded annually, semi-annually and quarterly. We have learned all those things. Now we want to discuss another important point that is what is conversion period. Now let's take the same previous example. Okay, amount is rupees 20,000. Let's say that this is a loan. This is a loan that you are taking from a bank. The bank sanctions you this loan at an interest rate of 8% per annum for a period of two years. Okay, we want to talk about what is conversion period. First, we'll start when the interest rate is compounded annually. So when the interest rate is compounded annually, this is the first year that is after the it will take a period of one year to calculate the interest on the amount given to you. So the, for the first year, that is for the period of first year, your principal is 20,000, the loan that you took from the bank at a rate of 8% for this time period that is one year. Now, the, what will be interest? Interest will be, simple interest will be is equal to P that is 20,000 multiplied by R that is rate multiplied by T that is time period. P multiplied by R multiplied by T that is the formula of uh, simple interest. So if you find, uh, if you solve this, you'll get rupees 1600. Now, what will be the loan amount at the end of this first year? The loan amount will be principal plus simple interest is equal to this amount, rupees 21. 1600 now when you have calculated this interest or simple interest doesn't doesn't matter whether you call it interest or simple interest when you have calculated the interest and then you add it to the principal the previous principal to form a new principal why this is a principal because this loan amount is actually the principal for the next year right so this is a new principal so you have added this interest of this period of one year for this period of one year to this previous principle and you are getting a new principle. This is actually the conversion period when you add interest to form a new principle conversion period. So in the case of in the case of when in the case when your interest rate is compounded annually so in one year there will be just one conversion period because you'll add interest to the previous principal after the end of one year exactly at the end of one year so the conversion period is this one when you form the new principal by adding the interest and in the case of um, interest rate being compounded annually you have one conversion period in one year now when you will move to the next year so you'll again take this principle the loan amount as a principal rate and time you'll again calculate the interest you'll get the interest as rupees 1728 so at the end of the second year the loan amount will be principal 2 that is this one plus si2 that is this one now this time this is the final amount that you'll pay back to the bank but again you have actually added the interest to the previous principle, right? Interest to the, to the principal, and you are getting this value. You're getting this value. So this is another conversion period, right? So this is another conversion period. So if in this example of period is equal to two years, when the interest rate is being compounded annually, then you are actually having two conversion periods. First one at the end of first year, second one at the end of second year, right? So they are total two conversion periods, but there will be one conversion period in one year, right? Now, if your interest rate is being compounded half yearly that is semi-annually so semi-annually means that we have already discussed all these things 
it means that after ev after a period of six months your interest will be added to the previous principal okay so for the first six month six months first period of six months principal is equal to rupees twenty thousand rate is equal to eight percent time is equal to six months six months means half year therefore when you will calculate simple interest or just interest it will be P multiplied by R multiplied by T is equal to rupees 800. Now, since this is half yearly, so at the end of the first six period of six months, you'll get a loan amount. That is P1 plus SI1. So, so this amount is rupees 20,800. So you'll get the first conversion period here. You are getting first conversion period at the end of six months, right? So the conversion period in the case of interest being compounded half yearly is six months. In the case of annually, it is one year. In the case of half yearly, it is conversion period is six months because after every six months, you are adding the interest to the previous principal to get the new principal. Now this loan amount is the principal for the next year. Okay, so 21,600 rate is 8% time period is half year. You'll calculate the interest and you'll get rupees 832. Now, when you again add this interest to this principal at the end of the second period of six months, now actually you have completed one year. Six months plus six months is equal to 12 months means one year. So after the end of Second period of six months, that is after the end of first year, your loan amount will be P2 plus SI2, that is 21,632. Now again, this is a conversion period, right? So in the case of, in the case of interest being compounded semi-annually, conversion period is of six months. It means that in one year, there will be, in one year, there will be two conversion periods. In the case of annually, there was only one conversion period in each year, per year. Here you have two conversion periods. Now, if we proceed further and take this loan amount as the principal for this third period of six months, then principal is 21,632, rate is 8%, time period is six months, that is half year. You calculate interest, you get this amount. Now again, when you'll find the loan amount at the end of third period of six months by adding this interest to this principal, then again, this is another conversion period. And it's again happening of, for a period of six months, after a period of six months. So here again, you'll get conversion period. In the same way, if you proceed further, then again, after six months, you'll get another loan amount at the end of fourth period of six months that is at the end of second year right so finally this is the final amount that you have to pay back to the bank but since you are adding this interest to this principal actually this is again a conversion period again a conversion period so in the case of rate uh, interest rate being compounded semi-annually the conversion period is of six months and in one year, you have two conversion periods. And in this particular case, where our example is of time, is of time period of uh, two years, you'll have two conversion periods in one year. Therefore, total will be four conversion periods in two years, right? Now let's move to when your interest rate is being compounded quarterly. Now quarterly means that after every three months, for a period of three months, you'll calculate the interest and then you'll add the interest to the principal, right? So principal is 20,000, rate is 8%, time is three months, that is one by four year. Now, if you calculate simple interest here, 20,000 times 8% times one by four year is equal to rupees 400. This interest, when you add to this principal at the end of first period of three months, you'll get a loan amount that is a new principal because this will act as the principal for the next period of three months. This is the first conversion period. It means that in the case of interest rate being compounded quarterly, 
your conversion period will occur after every three months, right? After every three months. Conversion period is of three months. In the case of semi-annually or half yearly, it is six months. In the case of annually, it is one year. So first conversion period. Now for the again second period of three months, this will be principal. You'll again calculate the interest. You'll again find the loan amount. Since you're adding this interest to uh, this principal to get this loan amount, you'll again this get you, uh, let's say that this is CP conversion period. You'll again get a conversion period after the end of second period of three months. So this is conversion period after again three months. So you'll again move forward and then again you will get a conversion period after the third period of three months conversion period. Right. And again, after three months, you'll again get a uh, sorry, this is not a final amount because this is the end of one year and we have to calculate for two years. Right. So again, after the fourth period of three months, you are getting again a conversion period because you are adding this interest to this principle to get a new principle conversion period. So now if you notice in the case of quarterly conversion period is of three months and in one year there will be four conversion periods one two three and four the fourth three months means fourth period of three months means that is the end of one year now i have not calculated you know for the next second year i have not calculated i leave this for you you have to calculate it but tell me if in the case of quarterly, the conversion period is of three months and in one year you have four conversion periods. So how many conversions period there will be in total for the period of two years? Now for two years, it will be four times two. That is eight conversion periods in two years. In one year you have four. Therefore in two years you will have eight conversion periods. Each will occur after three months, three months, three months, three months, three months, and so on and so forth. 